Last Sunday we talked about life scripts and how each one of us is handed a life script from the beginning uh, of our lives and how we write that story or that script through our lives. We mentioned last week also there are two basic questions that accompany every person throughout life. And these two questions are, who am I, and what am I to do with my life? So, church, how many of you can give a satisfactory answer to those two questions at this point? <laughs> Janet's got it figured out. That's good. <laughs> well, probably not too many of us would feel real confident with our answers, that we're still trying to get it figured out. That's the point. Uh, we probably don't get it all figured out until we are done writing the story. Today's reading from the Gospel of Matthew invites us to consider how we might answer these questions in the light of Jesus' teachings. So the first question, who am I? Well, in light of what we know about our, our Christian faith, uh, we know that in baptism, our identity was sealed. And some of you went through baptism confirmation, so it's a, it's a two uh, full process. In our baptisms, we rather consciously or unconsciously chose to follow Jesus on the way, that we are disciples of Jesus the Christ. And so Jesus says to us, your salt and your light. Second question, what am I to do with my life? Now that I'm a piece of salt or a cell of light, what am I to do with my life? Jesus might say to us, then like salt, Add a little zest and flavor to the meaning of life and life around you. Or like light, bring some enlightenment, some purpose and some meaning to the world around you. So be like salt, be light. In doing so, Jesus calls us to make a difference with our lives in the world. And that's the point. To help restore life and beauty and wonder in our world in this 21st century postmodern time. Jesus calls us to act with kindness and compassion. Jesus says, work for justice and make sure to the best of our ability that there is a fair distribution of goods and services so that everybody might enjoy the same beauty of life. Be agents of reconciliation where humans work to build walls and tribal boundaries to separate God's children from each other. And be peacemakers. Be peacemakers in a world that's set on violence and hate and prejudice. Be salt. Be light. Go into the world. The Apostle Paul proclaimed the teaching of Jesus throughout the cities of the Mediterranean world when he said, In Christ we are all one. There is neither Jew nor Greek, male nor female, slave or free. There is no division. There are no walls. There are no barriers. A pretty gutsy thing for Paul, for Paul to do in the first century world. A pretty gutsy thing to do in the postmodern 21st century world. Today's passage from the Gospel of Matthew is a continuation of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Last week we heard the Beatitudes, this week we begin to flesh those Beatitudes out a little bit. So following the Beatitudes in verses 1 through 12 of chapter 5 in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus tells his audience that at this very moment they are salt, Meaning they are cleansing life. They are preserving life. They are adding flavor and zest to life. Just like you do your soup at home. 
At this very moment, followers of Jesus are light. They are revealing, revealing what is hidden so that all can see. God, through us, gives light to all in the house, Jesus said. And the word, the Greek word, translated as house, means the established world. Not one house, but the house meaning the world. And that's a very big house. Jesus grew up in the Greco-Roman world. Most people in the world were speaking Greek. It was beginning to change a little bit as uh, Augustus brought in Latin. Uh, <coughs> and, the, and the Roman languages soon spread. But for Jesus, it was Greek. And Hebrew, of course, the native language, or Aramaic, the na native language of Jesus in Palestine. The Gospels that we have were all written in Greek, and so our translations don't come from Aramaic or Hebrew, they come from Greek. And the Greeks called Saul Theion. Theo is God. Ion, like iodized, salt. And it means divine. Salt in Greek means divine. The Romans had the phrase, and they said, there is nothing more useful than sun, and salt, or light and salt. In fact, the road that led from Rome to the Adriatic Sea was called the Via Salaria, which means the salt road. Roman soldiers were sometimes paid in salt blocks, and that's where we get the word salary. The word for salad in Italian is insalata, and insalata comes from the word salt because the Romans would use salt on their leafy greens and vegetables to make them taste better. We need salt to survive. However, we know that too much salt can harm us. In fact, the Chinese commit suicide by eating too much salt. There are over 1,400 uses for salt. Every cell of our body contains salt. It's key in the operations of all our body's signals to and from the brain. You get the importance of salt. Jesus says to us, you are the salt of the earth. <clears throat> As for light, Jesus tells his followers that they are the light of the world, and that this light should not be hidden, but it should be seen by the world. Several years ago we started the tradition of singing uh, when the kids leave the children's sermon. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Children are light. Not all their works are light driven. <laughs> Not all our works are light driven. But still, it is a light that makes us smile. Light, as I was telling the children, can be seen in our good works and in our words of kindness. Because it is our works and our words that will attract others to see that not only the goodness that's in us or in the person that's doing these good works and saying these nice things, but it's a reflection of God, the divine source of light itself. And who of us is not drawn to light? People who are light draw us. They draw us to them. And they draw others to the light. We are sort of in a world in this postmodern 21st century where social media has gone a little crazy. And there are not that many examples of light that we see on social media. 
In a 2015 Pew survey, 90% of teens have a smartphone or access to one. 45% of these teens say they use the internet constantly. Constantly. 45%. 85% of our, of our teens are using YouTube. And Facebook is now declining because, according to them, that's old people. That's how they communicate. So, we don't want to communicate that way. We did that when we were teens, too. You don't want to do what your grandparents or your parents do. That's embarrassing. So, kids have moved on a little bit. About half of the young people that were uh, interviewed in this Q survey done in 2015, said they have experienced some form of cyberbullying. And cyber just simply means digital media like cell phones, computers, and laptops. Bullying has been a part of life since the beginning of time. We were subject of that, or we did that uh, when we were growing up, I'm sure. For some reason, people have always found that bullying Comforting, because through bullying we can put other people down, even if the comments are harmful and hurtful. And we know, I don't have any stats on it, but we know that bullying is one of the major contributors to youth suicide. Jesus says, be salt, be light. And we say, Jesus, how can we be salt? How can we be light? I mean, look around. Jesus, our politics are in chaos. We constantly argue with each other over truth and trust and honesty. People, even within family systems, find it hard to have a civil discourse around the table if we're with the opposite side. Media giants fuel these divisions. We are loyal to either Fox News or MSNBC. There is little in between. Religion fuels our divisions as well. Conservatives and liberals in the faith have a hard time connecting with each other, of believing each other, or even listening to each other. Respect for religion has diminished. We know that. Not just among atheists and intellectuals, but among the wider public. The next generation of young people looks likely to be, to be the most religiously unaffiliated group of all time. 35% of adult millennials, that means Americans born between 1981 and 1996, are religiously unaffiliated. Church has no place for them. So, church, what does it look like to be a disciple of Jesus Christ in this time? We all stress over the lack of people in our pews. But the question is, what do we do about it? Jesus says, you are salt. You are light. Jesus says, do good works so that they might be seen by all who know you. Do what is right. Follow the path of Jesus every day. The greatest currency that we have is not in our wallet, it's in our heart. The greatest currency we have is truth. We speak the truth, we share the truth, and we write the truth. We welcome the stranger. Whenever a stranger walks in our door, and it doesn't matter what label that stranger wears, 
We welcome that person as if we were welcoming Jesus Christ himself. We are advocates for the most vulnerable in society, the poor, the addicted, the sick, the very young, the very old. We empower people of all races and nations and languages and gender lifestyles. We live with hope. We are not hopeless. We live in hope. We listen and we are always aware that we might be wrong. And we are always looking for the best in the people that we disagree with. I know it's not easy. It's not easy at all. I struggle with it as much as you do. But this is what Jesus did. This is what Jesus taught. Jesus, I'm going to go around away from this for just one second. Jesus lived in a world where all of his Jewish groups were coming apart because the Pharisees wanted to do what was right with Torah, but doing right in Torah wasn't always interpreted as the best thing to do. And the Sadducees, they wanted to become in cahoots with Rome because they were afraid if they didn't, things would fall apart. And the Zealots, they wanted to kill every Roman they saw. And the Essenes, they wanted to withdraw from everything. And so they went down to the Dead Sea and Qumran and established monastic communities. And Jesus loved the Judaism of his day, of him. His religion, his life. And so Jesus was one person that tried to transform the religion of his people in a way that could bring life and meaning and flavor. Jesus had to confront that. And we have to confront that too in our day. Not the Judaism, but we have to confront what Christianity is becoming in our day and in our age. And that's a tall order. The world is watching us. The world is waiting for you and I to come up with some answers of how to be disciples of Jesus the Christ. And you say, how? And I say, be salt. Be light. Use what Jesus has given us to make this world better and safer and more beautiful. We invite you to become a part of a community that seeks to add salt and light to the wider community around us.